Joining us right now to talk markets, including what he's seeing from earnings and how the Fed has impacted things on Wall Street is Noah Blackstein. He's senior portfolio manager at Dynamic Funds. And why don't we talk first what you think the, the mood is for equities, and whether you think uh, these highs can continue. I think these highs can probably continue. I think we've got the Fed with probably two more rate cuts this year for sure. Um, I think that uh, credit is being well behaved. Uh, we'll see how the earnings season goes, but uh, leading indicators from the banking stocks, certainly on earnings and on, on credit, would suggest that uh, the economy looks fine. Since July, you've had much broader participation in the market uh, than just uh, seven stocks. Um, all of that's voting well, I think, uh, overall uh, for the market to continue to work here. Obviously, there's some geopolitics uh, and uh, perhaps uh, concerns around the election, uncertainty. Uh, but from what we see uh, outside of, uh, you know, people trying to hedge equity risk, uh, credit and bond markets have seemed relatively tame. Uh, and we think the market continued to work higher this year and into next. Hey, Noah, there, there have been some questions. Uh, that just start with the assumptions that, that you just listed. The idea that we definitely get two more Fed cuts. Um, Fed Governor Waller making some comments that maybe we don't need to, to cut as much, that maybe... Um, the economy's in good shape and we don't need it. You just made the, sh the comment yourself that we are in good shape. So if the Fed comes around to that conclusion and does not do another two rate cuts, is that a problem from the equities perspective? Yeah, I think they're going to do another two rate cuts. They're not going to skip a meeting. Look, you're going to have a jobs number that, first of all, on the last jobs number that you had, the participation rate in terms of who filled out the survey was at a 10-year low, which suggests that it's highly probable that it's going to be revised. I think the downside risks uh, to employment are, are certainly there, uh, and real rates are very high. Whether you want to take the six-month annualized inflation number at 2.6, or even you want to take the other 12-month inflation um, at 3%, you know, when you're at 5% on Fed funds, 200 basis points of real rates would be considered any very would be considered very tight at any point in the last 30 years. So the Fed funds rate is tight. Uh, and there's not a lot of slack on the labor side. So I think they're going to go two more times. I don't think that job, I think that jobs number was a head fake. Number one, two, the next amount of jobs data that you're going to get is going to be really uh, uh, messy because of the hurricane impacts uh, that we've seen. So uh, I to err on the side of caution, I would suspect that they cut. You're also probably going to get a misread on retail sales on Thursday. I think they could come out stronger than expected because of all the um, stocking up on supplies that happened during the hurricane era. Areas And so, uh, you know, I, I think the, the data is going to be weak and it's much better to err on the side of caution. Uh, the idea of skipping, I think, uh, would, would have consequences for the bond and equity markets for sure. Well, that, that, if, if you're worried about the bond and equity markets, that seems like a silly reason to go ahead and cut raise. If you are actually worried that the economy is struggling underneath it, that's a different story. Um, you think the yeah, I don't think the, yeah, I don't think the labor market, I don't believe that the labor market is as strong as that last report, just given how... Uh, low, the response rate was on that survey would suggest that it, it's, it's highly likely it'll uh, undergo significant revisions. Given that and given how high real rates are, you know, the Fed is, is, is uh, has thus far, you know, I, I wouldn't say we've, we've landed yet, but they've steered this fairly uh, well, uh, beginning to uh, keep rates this high, though, as inflation continues to fall, as de facto tightening. This economy doesn't need them uh, to do de facto tightening as unemployment covers around 4.2 on its way to 4.4. So I would suspect two more rate cuts of 25 basis points each real rates as at 4%, they put out in their forecasts. I know, it's just real rates are at 4%, which doesn't seem excessively high if you are looking at the last 20 years. It, real, uh, for real rates? Yeah, the 10-year of 4%. Those, are, big, those are very high for real rates. If 400, you know, 300 basis points for real rates is very high in the last 30 years. We so the idea that, that rates have gone up as the Fed started uh, this rate-cutting process, we've seen the Treasury market look at higher yields since then. Because we've taken out the tail of a recession, right? So we've, yeah. we, the, the risk that everyone was worried about was a recession, and that tail has been reduced by the Federal Reserve beginning to, uh, beginning to, to, uh, to cut rates. So we've removed the recession tail in the, in the overall market. But I wouldn't call this a booming labor market by any stretch of the imagination. And I wouldn't just take the last data point, which is likely a head fake, um, into a soft, much softer labor market than we've seen over the last few years, uh, and then just start uh, to pause rates. Perhaps pause sometime in 2025, 
and reassess, but but not right now. What uh, what areas in particular do you like within the markets, Noah? Look, I think uh, you know. There's probably, as rates come down, there's a long-term secular opportunity, I think, in single-family housing, amongst other areas. But obviously, the biggest theme in the markets is AI. AI, in and of itself, is not a product. You can't call 1-800-AI and have them ship that to your house. AI is a data strategy at the end of the day, and it's the implementation of that data strategy within software, within call centers and other places like that, that I think is going to lead us into a productivity boom um, that probably is bigger than we saw in the 1990s. And so, you know, we're at this very first stages of AI where they're building up the infrastructure. Uh, the next stage is incorporating that into technology, into software, uh, into uh, not only generating revenues, uh, but also saving costs. Uh, that process hasn't begun. And I think the next stage of where we're going is uh, for corporations to organize their data, figure out where they want it on premise or in the cloud, uh, given the proprietary nature of their data. Uh, and then to begin the process of incorporating AI and analytics and machine learning into everything they do. It's, uh, it's truly a revolution in terms of uh, what corporations can save in terms of labor costs. But I also do think that with better insights can come better revenues and there'll be a revenue opportunity there.